Hi Gemini, this is your May mid-month tarot reading. We'll have three separate spreads in this mid-month reading. We'll have a spread on new love, a separate spread on love in an existing relationship or marriage, and then I'll do a love from the past, aka the X spread. Please like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love in the second half of May. We have uh, the Queen of Swords, uh, clarified by the Two of Cups. We have the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Star in the Potential Outcome. We have uh, the King of Swords with the Empress and the Ten of Cups. And we also have the Ace of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. You're probably dealing with a fellow air sign. <laughs> Another Gemini, Libra or Aquarius. We also have uh, Sagittarius and Taurus on the table. But you see what I'm seeing? Gemini, the King and the Queen of Swords. Alright, so yeah. A perfect couple, perfect match. Um, most likely a fellow air sign or somebody with a lot of air in their chart. Um, yeah, for the reading's sake, I'll assume you're the Queen of Swords, just to make it easier for me, but you can assign the roles as you wish, it doesn't really matter. We got both, right? So yeah, the first guy that came out is the Queen of Swords, that's you! <laughs> right away, from the get-go, out the door, that's you, out the gate, right? Then uh, you're clarified by the Two of Cups, and uh, the Two of Cups, there's two people in the Two of Cups. I will just have to assume that's you and uh, the King of Swords in there. I know it's the Two of Cups is partially blocked, because I don't have enough space on my table, but it, yeah, there's two people in the Two of Cups. It's a card of a soulmate connection, it's a card of uh, unconditional love, and it's a card of when two people are on the same page, and uh, two people feeling the same way towards one another, right? And that's that's what it kind of feels like, right? The next card I came out is the Ace of Swords, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. I think the Ace of Swords is a card of clarity, right? So you, the two of you will be crystal clear about what you mean to each other. So what that's telling me actually is that it's going to be an instant connection, instant chemistry, instant clarity, love at first sight, and uh, yada yada yada. You get the idea, right? It's clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is a card of uh, Sagittarius, or the Wheel of Fortune is the start of a new cycle. It could also be a card of travel. Perhaps some of you are traveling together, or you could meet this person while you're on the road, but most likely, again, the Wheel of Fortune is the two of you getting on board with this right away. Nobody is hesitating, nobody is dragging their feet, nobody is doubting or questioning this. It's, it's, it's full steam ahead. You got the green light, right? Then we have the star right there in the middle. If this King of Swords is an Aquarius, it makes total sense, right? The star is an Aquarius, uh, major arcana card, and uh, the King of Swords is an air sign in general. If they're not an Aquarius, that's okay too. What the, what the star means in this case is a wish come true. Perhaps uh, You've always wanted someone like this, or you wanted always wanted this particular person, or they did. Because the star is something we usually wish for or hope for for a very long time. And uh, perhaps once you, the two of you met, um, you'll be like, yes, finally, wish granted. This is the person I always thought of. This is the person I always dreamt of. All right, and uh, we also have the Ace of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. So you got two Aces, right? The Ace of Pentacles always talks about long term, always does. Every once in a while, the Ace of Pentacles comes through as a card of a proposal, right? Yeah, it does, but uh, uh, it's a card of something long term, something when people are ready for a commitment, when people are ready to settle down, when people are ready to start a family, right? In the potential outcome, we have that King of Swords with the Empress and the Ten of Cups. I believe the Empress starts you in the future. I'm not saying you're not the Empress right now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but this is simply a status change, right? The Empress is a future wife or a future significant other, a future mother figure. If having children is still an option for you, the two of you could definitely have children together, right? Then perhaps that's the way this person sees you from the very beginning. It's somebody they want to spend the rest of their life with and have a family with, right? Besides that, the Empress is just an amazing card to have either way, right? Because uh, the Empress is abundance in its purest form. The Empress is one of the most positive cards in the deck, and in my spreads, I usually uh, mention this, the Empress usually shows up as a sign from above, or a stamp of approval, so to speak, from the universe to, for a connection to move forward, and that's exactly what's happening here. Not that you actually needed the universe's approval, but just in case, yes. <laughs> the, ans the answer is yes, the universe also is um, all for the two of you moving forward together. The Ten of Cups right next to the deck is the icing on the cake. That card is often referred to as the happily ever after card. It's a family card. It's one of the best cards when it comes to emotionally fulfilling relationships or marriages. 
and um, yeah, happily ever after again, the two of you will connect right away, right away. And uh, I really like how um, there's no obstacles here. It's, again, no hesitation, no doubts, nothing like that. It's like perfect match, and you do, and you are a perfect match. If this person is really an um, an air sign, air signs usually match up pretty good between each other. I know that because I'm a Gemini. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's what I have for you. Congratulations. Gemini, if you are already married or if you're in a relationship, this pair is for you. We have the Empress, we have the Magician, uh, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, we have Strength, and we have the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. My, oh my, Gemini. <laughs> Look at this. Every single card on the table is a major arcana card. Every single one of them. Even the Wheel of Fortune, clarifying the Magician. Even the card on the bottom of the deck. Something big, something major is about to happen, but I don't see anything bad or negative. I just don't. And the, the first card I came out is the Empress. The Empress loves you. I don't know if you watched uh, the first spread, the new love spread, for prior to this one, but that one also had the Empress. Okay, so yeah, the, uh, the Empress is one of the most positive cards in the deck. Let me, let me go over every single card, what they mean, and then we'll try to make something out of this. Alright, so the Empress could be a Libra or a Taurus. <laughs> the Empress is one of the most positive cards in the deck. It's abundance in its purest form. The Magician, the next card over, is actually one of your major arcana cards, uh, Gemini. You share it with Virgo. So, Gemini, Virgo. But the Magician is a card of manifestation and most importantly, it's a card of taking action. The Magician's got all the tools they need at their disposal and they're using those tools, right? The Wheel of Fortune, clarifying the Magician could be a Sag, but the Wheel of Fortune is the start of a cycle you know something perhaps you guys are taking it to the next level but we'll get to that in just a second right strength right next to the deck could be a Leo you're dealing with but strength could also be a card of pure raw passion all right uh, strength could be a card of loyalty strength could be a card of courage strength could be a card of soft and uh, soft power you know not something that's being forced upon somebody but you know it's just soft. <laughs> and the, the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck, another Taurus card, right? Or the, the Hierophant is a card of a commitment, marriage, it's a card of education, it's also a very spiritual card. So all together, something new is about to happen. Or an elevation to the next level will take place. And uh, you will either need to have courage to do it, and you will with the Strength card, um, perhaps you guys are starting a family or you are expanding your family, right? Um, perhaps you guys are moving. The Wheel of Fortune could be a card of relocation, moving to a new place, purchasing a new apartment, a new house, or an additional property. Um, overall, yeah, something awesome, something very powerful and unavoidable, <laughs> right? When the more major iconic cards you have, the more unavoidable it is. You know, but I don't think you want to avoid something like that, because this is just beautiful. It's amazing. All right? Cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, Gemini, um, in the second half of May. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the most recent X. Uh, we have uh, the Page of Swords, clarified by the King of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. We have Judgment. We have uh, the Queen of Swords, clarified by the Hangman. And uh, we have uh, the Five of Wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. I'm going to call it a 50-50. I'm just going to be honest with you, Gemini. It's going to be up to you as to what you want to do here. But let's talk about the person, right? The first card I came out is the Page of Swords, which is classified by the King of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. That's it right there. Either a water sign or an earth sign, or perhaps this person's got both water and earth in their chart. Right? Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, but the uh, King of Cups came out first, right? And uh, the Knight of Pentacles was the last card that I pulled. And I simply asked, what does this King of Cups really, really want with Gemini? And the Knight of Pentacles came out. So yes, to be fair to this King of Cups, they want long term, right? The Knight of Pentacles always talks about long term. Okay, and uh, the Knight of Pentacles, to be fair to this person, again, is the most serious, the most grounded knight out of all four knights. They could have taken their time. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest knight <laughs> out of all four knights. The Page of Swords could be a message coming from them. Um, it's also a card of spying, keeping tabs. Perhaps they've, uh, even though the two of you broke up a while ago, they've, uh, you know, kept tabs on you all this time. 
Um, we have judgment in the middle, which is a card of somebody coming back from the past. It's also a card of somebody having to make a judgment call. And uh, I think in this case, that would be you, uh, Gemini. You're the Queen of Swords, uh, male or female, absolutely doesn't matter. The Hangman clarifying the Queen of Swords, uh, it's a card of stagnation. It's a card of um, you perhaps taking your time. Perhaps you're going to put this person on the back burner and uh, uh, think about it at a later date. <laughs> right? The five of ones on the bottom of the deck, it could be your own internal struggle. right? Um, I don't know what happened between the two of you, but I don't see you jumping head first. I don't see you welcoming this person back into your life. So, must have been not something pretty right and that's why you're taking your time and please do yeah I think this person if this person dragged their feet in the past I think they can wait a little longer while you figure things out all right so yeah that's what I have for you Gemini for this reading for this time period if this video resonates with you please like it please also share and subscribe and other than that Gemini have an amazing the rest of the month